The 70s were a golden era for sci-fi films, bringing us some of the most imaginative and thought-provoking stories ever put on screen. While everyone knows Star Wars, there are other gems from this decade that still dazzle in 2024. Let's dive into 70s sci-fi movies that remain timeless. Soylent Green In a dystopian future where overpopulation and pollution have pushed humanity to the brink, food scarcity isn't just a plot point, it's a wake-up call. Charlton Heston's gritty performance as Detective Thorne is as gripping now as it was back then. And then there's the twist. It's a moment that has cemented Soylent Green in the annals of cinema history, one that still shocks and resonates with audiences new and old. The chilling revelation about the titular food product is a stark reminder of the potential consequences of unchecked corporate greed. Very 2024, if you ask me. They're making our food out of people. Next thing, they'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You gotta tell them. You gotta tell them. Promise, Tiger. I promise. I'll tell the exchange. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell them. Silent Green is people! THX 1138. It's hard to go wrong with the 1984 or Brave New World formula of a dystopian future where things like emotions and art are totally not chill, but uniformity and adherence to the government are, indeed, chill. This is the setting for George Lucas's landmark directorial debut, a visually stunning film that falls into the same type of thoughtful sci-fi that people like Stanley Kubrick were doing at the time. It's eerie, moody, and yet another 70s vision of the future, where the Earth has been deemed uninhabitable. Plus, society is run by super smooth android police. Commercially, it was a complete disaster, but cinematically, it's a fantastic movie that definitely stands the test of time. This is City Probe Scanner. We've run across some illegal sexual activity. Beneath the Planet of the Apes. The sole survivor of an interplanetary rescue mission searches for the only survivor of the previous expedition. He discovers a planet ruled by apes and an underground city run by telepathic humans. Beneath the Planet of the Apes is a bizarre, genre-bending sequel that relies more on philosophical musings and borderline experimentalist filmmaking to tell its story, which is indeed an odd choice for a sequel to the Charlton Heston original, Planet of the Apes. As a studio looking to cash in, it was weird, but for lovers of great film, it was amazing. Where are you going? Into the Forbidden Zone. Someone or something has outwitted the intelligence of the gorillas. Oh, and they! And they! We don't kill our enemies. We get our enemies to kill each other. Logan's run envisioned a world where we finally achieved the dream, ridding the world of anyone who annoys us before they get too old. And this movie has since been parodied, referenced, and wished to be real ever since. The film ended up costing about $9 million, which was not cheap in 1976, but it was worth it, standing the test of time many, many years later in all its 70s glory. Logan, trained to enforce the law, dares to become a runner himself. He and the girl who loves him become the hunted. The black hole, due largely to the movie's special effects, had this fantastical aura that, despite its eerie and dark story mood, somehow made it great for kids at the time. And to be sure, it's kind of a messed up plot, involving a lost spacecraft reappearing and robots giving people repeated lobotomies. It's like Disney wanted to go full on Event Horizon, but then remembered their Disney. Still, despite being almost universally labeled as a failure, the black hole is actually not that bad. The film is generally pleasing to the eye, fairly well paced, and touches on some interesting issues.
clockwork orange. Stanley Kubrick really had a way of taking great sci-fi books and turning them into excellent films. A Clockwork Orange was no exception. Basically, apparently in the future, Britain just becomes an endless string of violence and milk drinking. That really sums up all of A Clockwork Orange, including the book, yet somehow it's one of the most seminal films not just from the 70s, but of cinema in the 20th century. <laughs> the evening's the great time, isn't it, Alex Bond? <laughs> He's enterprising, aggressive, young, bold, vicious. He'll do. Silent Running The fear of humanity going too far is by no means a Hollywood trend that started recently. Films like Silent Running, among others, envisioned a future where plants could no longer survive on Earth and were instead meticulously curated in space stations until such time that Earth was suitable for botanicals again. Despite its total 70s-ness, it's actually a pretty epic movie with amazing set design and miniature effects that predated Star Wars by years. And to make it even more 70s, there are even two original songs from Joan Baez. Amazing companions on a journey beyond the stars. <laughs> the man has a full house and he knew it! Now how about that? Westworld offers an original plot that submerges the viewer in a thoroughly thought-out fantasy world. This, paired with convincing acting from the cast, makes it a worthwhile watch. Even though the special effects look like something you would find at a party city, the movie is still really entertaining and funny in some parts, like in the bar fight scene. It's also interesting to see what people in the 70s thought about technology in the future. Also, the ending isn't predictable unlike some other older films. Stand by for resort activation. You ready on phase four, four, three? Debate now. That's not supposed to happen. Close Encounters of the Third Kind directed by Steven Spielberg, elevates the extraterrestrial sci-fi trope in a mysterious and uplifting manner. Although, of course, it has its flaws. This film is a perfect watch for anyone obsessed with the idea of discovering alien life. It includes groundbreaking, for the time, special effects, such as changes in lighting to convey the presence of aliens, part of what makes it compelling storytelling. Well, I just want to know that it's... It's really happened. Damn it, I know this. I know what this is. This means something. Alien is a great example of an older movie that still lives up to today's expectations. The characters are incredibly well written, and each of their reactions to the situation is reasonable and understandable. The spacesuits and uniforms they wear in the ship aren't tacky or overwhelmingly old fashioned, and the special effects surprisingly still look up to date. The Xenomorph's appearance is very realistic, especially considering that it was made only using puppets and prosthetics. Alien was ahead of its time and is still a good watch, even by today's standards. <laughs>